guys hope you're doing great our today's question is best time to buy and sell stock for so the question says here you are given an array for which the ith element is the price of a given stock on day i design an algorithm to find the maximum profit you may complete at most k transactions you may not engage in multiple transactions at the same time that is you must sell the stock before you buy again okay so we can complete at most k transactions which will be a value given to us apart from the prices array and this question uh, would follow the same concept that we have discussed in the other question which is best time to buy and sell stock 3 uh, which is about being able to make at most two transactions so i strongly recommend that you go and watch that video first in order to be able to completely understand this solution so um, as discussed in the previous um, video about two transactions, this solution will be mostly around generalizing that solution to K transactions, right? So there we, we wanted to find the relative values of the four values, the first buy, first sell, second buy, and the second sell. So here we will have K such values and we will maintain an array of those values for buy and sell and update them as we go through the prices array, right? But there's just one uh, extra thing to look at. So if I have uh, prices of length 10, okay, and my K is more than 10 by two, right? So in that case, or, or more than or equal to K by two, in that case, it is as good as me being able to make any number of transactions, right? Uh, because uh, if I have 10 days, the maximum number of transactions that I can make is five, right? I have to buy and sell and buy and sell and buy and sell. So what we'll do is that we'll check for that first. And if that is the scenario, then we will just rewrite the code that we do uh, for, uh, for for the condition where we have prices given with any number of transactions that we can make. And otherwise, we will go for the generalization of the um, best time and buy sell stock three solution. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, okay. So, <clears throat> let's look at the base conditions. So first we need the length. So length equals to prices dot length. Yeah. Now if, if length is less than or equal to one, or if we are said that we can make less than one or less than or equals to zero. In that case, we we'll just return zero because we cannot do anything here, right? Okay. Now, the second thing that we need to check is about, so we'll just need to initialize profit to zero. And we'll just check that if, uh, okay, so if k is greater than or equal to length by two, okay? Length divided by two. So what we're trying to say here is that if k is more than length by two, right? Then we will just be able to, so th this becomes like a question for us where we have any number of transactions that we can make. So what we will do is that we have our profit initialized. So we'll just move through the array I less than len minus one, okay, I plus plus, and then to profit we'll just add prices. Oh, okay, we'll have to check. So we'll have to check that if prices of I is smaller than prices of i plus one right so the next day the price is more than today so we make a transaction right so we'll just say that okay then i plus one minus prices of i okay 
Um, yeah. Cool. So we just calculate it in this manner. And after that, when we are done, all we have to do is return profit. And we are done. Okay. Cool. Now, otherwise, if that's not the case, then we need to, as I was saying, generalize the solution for two transactions. So we'll just create buy and uh, it will be an integer of size k and we'll fill it with uh, array, arrays dot fill and we we'll fill by with integer dot min values because we want to get started with whatever value we get at first right and we'll also create a cell which will be same and it's default zero so we don't need to do anything here okay then we'll just start with our traversal so okay so now with this particular current uh, day we have to update all the buy and sell values because they are relative to each other and if we try to maximize all of them as discussed in, in the other problem with two transactions, we will finally be able to say that, okay, sell of the K, the, the Kth transaction, the Kth sell transaction will give us the maximum profit, right? So what we will do is that we will say, okay, uh, J equals to zero, J less than K and J plus plus, okay? So for buy, for buy of, now we are, so every time we are updating uh, values where um, like we are maintaining the buy and sell J because we have K values. So every time we update, we'll be updating the buy of J here. Okay. So we'll just say that, okay, it's um, math.max buy J. The previous value or so if if this is the very first value then I don't have a previous um, transaction whose amount I can use to basically deduce or deduct this price of this day from right we don't have that so we'll just have to check that basically if my if my j is equals to zero, okay, if it is zero, then um, what do I need to do is just a zero minus the prices of i, okay, prices of i. Else, else, we use the previous the previous transaction uh, ended at cell i minus one. So that the amount of money we had after completing that transaction minus the price of today because we are buying it. Okay. So what we are saying here is that for buy j, either whatever we have in buy of j or if j is zero, that means that this is the very first transaction that I'm doing. So then just uh, deduce prices of I from that zero minus prices of I or otherwise whatever transaction I completed before this, which will be uh, cell I minus one, right? So that minus the prices of I. And now similarly, we'll populate cell J, which is equals to math.max cell J okay and <clears throat> so we we don't need to be worried about the zero condition here because we would have done the buy in the first place before this always so all we have to do is <clears throat> that we use buy oops sorry buy of j 
plus because we are selling it so we get that much of money plus prices of i so we just keep doing that and then at the end we return cell k minus one that is our last transaction of all the k transactions and that is the amount of money we have made out of the transactions we make so let's see if that works yeah that works We kind of missed a condition here somewhere. Oh, yeah, sorry. It has to be J minus one because we're dealing with J's, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that works. So the time complexity for this is conditional if you have your k greater than or equal to the length then we're just making one traversal of the prices array so that becomes o of n otherwise if we have to do this then we are making for each element in prices we are traversing from 0 to k so that becomes n into k where n is the number of days like number of elements in the prices and k is the given k so I hope you guys find this video helpful. If you do, please like, share and subscribe. Keep coding and take care guys.